الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اشتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا قوا أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا وقودها الناس والحجارة عليها ملائكة غلاظ شداد لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون يا أيها الذين كفروا لا تعتذروا اليوم إن ما تجزون ما كنتم تعملون صدق الله العظيم الله سبحانه وتعالى have set the month of Ramadan as a month of maghfira. If we look at the whole issue of Ramadan, when we look at the ahadith, there are a lot of ahadith, and I'm sure we all have heard many ahadith about the importance of Ramadan, virtues of Ramadan, virtues of fasting, and the special blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers on His servants during the month of Ramadan. When we look at all of this, you could just very simply see that the whole setup is made just to forgive us. In this world, we are not used to this. In this world, when you use the word, there is a big setup, it's to trap someone. When people like to hurt someone, when people like to trap someone and get that person very badly, they would make a setup. And depending on what type of person that is, accordingly the setup would be, the, would be made. Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made this whole setup just to forgive us. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our situation. We have not been turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have not been coming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We were running away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the month of Ramadan such that every believer at least thinks about coming back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who would never accept to masajid any other time of the year, as the month of Ramadan comes, they just feel they want to come. Now if they get a little push, they would come. Sometimes they don't push themselves. Anyone who wants to do anything good during the month of Ramadan, just a little push on ourselves and we are able to do it. The whole thing is arranged so that me and you and all of us, we make it safely to Jannah and we get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us. This is our responsibility. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, hu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. O you who believe, protect your souls and protect your families against the hellfire. Protecting our souls against Jahannam, protecting our families against Jahannam is our responsibility. What does that mean? I think in today's world setup, we can understand it very easily. If someone keeps a fire in the house and his children burn themselves in that fire, who will be held responsible? For sure they are going to hold the parents responsible for it that how come you kept that fire open and your children were able to burn themselves? You were supposed to protect yourself from burning themselves. If in a public place someone keeps fire and a couple of people burn themselves, that person will be held responsible. The owners, the organizer, the organization will be held responsible. Why did you keep an open fire over there? If people are burning themselves, they are not responsible. We are responsible for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the same thing. Protect yourselves and your families against the hellfire. The hellfire is open right there. Jahannam is open. All the sins are open. All the fitnas are open. Protect yourself and your families against that Jahannam. The doors of Jahannam are wide open over there. And when we are putting our families right out there into that Jahannam, and if they burn themselves, we are responsible for it. If we carefully look at this ayah, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wording the ayah, He's not saying that plan to protect, find ways to protect, no, this ayah, as if there is someone just going to the fire and is about to touch it, about to burn himself, and you tell him, right there, your son is about to touch the fire. And if that person remains sitting, and he says, don't worry about it, if he burns himself, I'll take him to the hospital. If the child will burn himself in that situation, for sure every person in the world, not just the law of the country, every person in the world will hold him responsible for it, that you saw your child going towards it, and still you didn't take any action. This is exactly how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, You are heading towards Jahannam. Your families are heading towards Jahannam. Make sure you save them before they burn themselves. Because if they burn themselves, if your children are going to burn themselves in Jahannam, you will be held responsible for it in Akhirah. What is the way of protecting our children, our souls, our families from Jahannam? The first step to that is istighfar. Repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. There are two words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have used in Qur'an and then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used them in the ahadith. One is istighfar, the other is called tawbah. These are two different things. Istighfar and tawbah. Istighfar, what does istighfar mean? Istighfar means seeking Allah's forgiveness. Tawbah means turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they both go together. They both are required at the same time. If a person would do istighfar and does not do tawbah, he have done half of the work. If the person would do the tawbah and he's not doing istighfar, this person is missing the other half of the work. Let's try to understand this tawbah and istighfar. First thing, so that we understand it clearly. In Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَيَا قَوْمِ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ 
Pay attention to the ayah now. Ya qawmi, istaghfiru rabbakum. O my people, do istighfar to your Rabb, thumma tubu ilayhi. And then turn to Allah, then do tawbah. So you see, even the order has been mentioned over there. Istighfar and then tawbah. Istighfar means, Ya Allah, I'm sorry. Forgive me for whatever I have done. And tawbah means, we change our life. We turn to Allah. Ya Allah, I was running away from you. I came back to you, Ya Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautifully puts it in Quran, Fafirru ila Allah. Run to Allah. Run to Allah. What does Fafirru ila Allah? Fafirru amma siwa Allah ila Allah. Run away from everything towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a person is running towards something, he's running away from something else. Fafirru ila Allah. Run towards Allah. Firru amma siwa Allah ila Allah. Give up everything else and run to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it for all of us so that we run to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not, that, it's not enough that we walk at this time. Just walking at this time is not enough. It's the month of Ramadan. We need to run to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His doors are wide open, but we want to make sure that we make it there before the month would end or before our life would end. Seeking Allah's forgiveness, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins, then turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not an optional act in Islam, is not a nafil, is not just a sunnah either, is not mustahab or masnoon. This is one of the fara'id of Islam. Seeking Allah's forgiveness is one of the fara'id of Islam. If we look into the ayahs, hundreds of ayahs of Al-Quran Al-Kareem, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us, Istaghfiru rabbakum, istaghfiru rabbakum. And then he says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, tubu ila Allah, tawbatan nasuha. So istighfar and tawbah, both of them are ordered in Quran, that you have to do it, is not an optional thing. A person who commits sin, and then does not ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, he is getting additional sin now for not asking for forgiveness. You push someone. That person is thinking, is it by mistake? Did he see me? Didn't see me? It was intentional. And then you keep on walking away. Now that person may come after you said, what are you doing? But if you said sorry to the person, that will wipe out everything. So istighfar is sorry. Ya Allah, I did it, I'm so sorry. I wasn't supposed to do it. I realized it was my mistake. I wasn't supposed to do it. But when a person doesn't say sorry, now that adds up to the sin. That you made that sin, you committed that sin, you disobeyed him, and then you don't even want to say sorry to him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on the day of Jum'ah, was going up on the member. As he gets on the first step of the member, he says, Ameen, loud. He says, Ameen. Sahaba Ridwanullah are surprised that no one is making any dua. Why is he saying Ameen for? And we never heard him doing this before. He steps on the second step of the member. And again he says, Ameen. Third step of the member. And he says, Ameen. Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een are waiting to get that answer why this Ameen is for. Who's making the dua? No one is making that dua. Is this is something new? Is this is a new sunnah? What's going on here? When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam finished the prayer, Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een asked him, Ya Rasulullah, today we saw you, we heard you saying things, you may never heard you doing that before. You were saying Ameen as you were going up on the member, but no one was making any dua. So was that Ameen a special sunnah of going up on the member? What was that, Ya Rasulullah? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, When I came 
into the masjid. Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam accompanied me. And as I went on the member, and I put the first step on the member, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam made the dua. Ba'udha man adraka Ramadan falam yuffarla. May that person be cursed and always stays away from the Rahmah of Allah, never receive the Rahmah of Allah. Ba'udha, which means stays away from Allah and from the Rahmah of Allah, never receives it. Who gets the blessed month of Ramadan and still does not do enough to get the forgiveness of Allah. I said, Ameen. Imagine who's making the dua and who's saying Ameen. Sayyidul Malaika. The leader of all malaika of all angels. The one who brought the wahi and revelation to all anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. He's making this dua. And Sayyidul Anbiya wal Mursaleen. The leader of all the anbiya and mursaleen. The leader of all the creatures. Is saying ameen to this dua. Who sent Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam to make that dua? Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the day of Jum'ah, at the time of the khutbah, the time of the acceptance of dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Jibreel alayhi salam that, O oh Jibreel, when my Prophet would have his foot on the first step on the member, you make this dua. When he puts his foot on the second step of the member, you make this dua. When he puts his foot on the third step of the member, you make this dua. He made three duas. Second dua, as he put the step on the foot on the second step of the member. A person who gets his, par- his parents in their old age, both or one of them, and he does not get do enough for his parents through which he can get the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ameen. Third step. Ba'udha man dhukirta indahu falam yusalli alayk. Woe to the person, curse to the person. That person will always be away from Allah's rahmah who hears your name, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he does not send blessings on you. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ameen. Look at these three things and the importance of these things in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obedience to parents. Sending blessings on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, especially upon hearing the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And being in the month of Ramadan and not doing enough to get Allah's forgiveness. Let's ask ourselves. The month of Ramadan is here. Last Jum'ah we were preparing for it and here almost a week is gone. What have we done to get the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Have we repented to Allah? Have we turned to Allah? Have we cried to Allah? Have we said sorry to Allah? Did we do istighfar? Did we ask Allah's forgiveness? Did we say, Ya Allah, I don't want to be in that situation no more. What did we do to get the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If we think that I said istighfar after prayer, have we asked Allah's forgiveness for whatever we have done in the past? And if we think we did, let's just then try to analyze it and really look into it that what is it that I have done and what is it that I need to do. Have I repented to Allah and asked Allah's forgiveness for missing the prayers? If I did, how come still we are missing prayers during the month of Ramadan? And I'm not still making up for those prayers that I have missed. Is there any plan to make up for the prayers? Or I'm so sorry. This is just like you borrowed money from a person and you see the person, you promised him I'll give it back to you in a month time. Six months later you see the person and you say, oh I'm sorry, I couldn't pay the money. And you walk away. He doesn't want to hear this. He wants to know when are you going to pay it. Oh I miss my prayers, Ya Allah, I'm so sorry I miss prayers in the past. 
When are you going to make up for it? When are you going to pay for it? We have been eating haram. Ya Allah, I'm sorry for eating haram. So did I give up eating the haram? We are earning haram. Did we give up earning haram? So many things. We know our situations. We know ourselves. That we have been doing them in the past. Have we done enough to give up those sins? It's not just, Ya Allah, I'm sorry, and that's the end of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to give it up. As I said, two words, istighfar and tawbah. وَيَا قَوْمِ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ Oh my people, ask Allah's forgiveness, do istighfar, ask Allah's forgiveness, and then turn to Allah, make up for what you have done in the past. Make up for those things, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not istighfar, sorry, and I go out of the masjid, that's it, that's the end of it. Believe me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to forgive us. And this is why He brought us in the Masajid, and this is why He gave us the month of Ramadan. He wants to forgive us. Wallahu yuridu an yatuba alaykum. Allah wants to forgive you. Subhanallah. Look at the beautiful ayah. This ayah is so beautiful, it's so lovely. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu yuridu an yatuba alaykum. Ya Allah, what do you want? He says, I want to forgive you. I want, to, I want you to turn to me, and I turn to you. Tawbah, the word Tawbah is used, which means you turn to me and I turn to you. Wallahu yuridu an yatuba alaykum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want to punish us. He does not want us to be punished. He is not going to get anything by us being punished. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to get His rahmah and mercy. He wants us to do whatever we can so that we get to the Jannah straight without having to go through any hardship of the Akhirah. This is what Allah wants. Wallahu yuridu an yatuba alaykum. Allah wants to forgive you. Now again the question is, have we asked Allah's forgiveness? Have we turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? As Allah has given us this month, did we look into our lives? These are the sins that I have been committing. So I need to give up these sins. I need to turn to Allah. I need to stop committing these sins. Now, maybe we think that, but it's difficult for me. For those who have haram, haram earning, their business is haram, their way of earning is haram. They may think, I can't just give it up as Ramadan came, because I know this will be my work. This will be my job. This will be my way of earning. So I'm not going to give it up. I won't be able to give it up. Okay. And many of us may be in similar situation according to different sins. Some of us, we may be missing one prayer every day. And I know that according to my schedule, I, I would be missing that prayer. Some of us, we, keep, we listen to songs. And we, the person knows it's difficult for me to decide that I'm going to give it up at this time. Whatever sins a person is making and committing, the question is, are we really ready to give it up? Okay, according to our understanding, I may not be able to. But the question is, do you really want to give it up? Right now, the question is not that can you or you cannot. The question is, do you want to give it up? And if we want to give it up, still the door is open. Subhanallah. And I will tell you how. If a person wants to give it up, and he's sincere about it, Okay, you can't do anything about giving it up because this is my earning. This is my business. I can't give it up now. Let's at least, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do istighfar and tawbah. Ya Allah, I'm sorry that I have been earning from this source. Or Ya Allah, I'm sorry I have been going out without hijab. Ya Allah, I'm sorry that I have been committing this sin. I have been missing my salah. Okay, and now Ya Allah, I know it's difficult for me to give it up. I won't be able to do it now. But Ya Allah, if you please find a way for me to give it up. Who has the control over this dunya? Who controls the world? Who controls people's situations? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He's feeding everyone, all millions of people from halal, why can't He feed us from halal? 
if he's allowing so many people to do these things in the right way, why can't he allow us? He will, but we need to ask him for it. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, this is my situation. Present, present your situation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, I'm not able to do this. Ya Allah, I'm not able to fulfill these faraid. I'm not able to follow these sunnahs. Ya Allah, I'm not able to give up this sin. Ya Allah, please forgive me and find a way for me. Ya Allah, make a very easy way for me so I would be able to do it properly. At least you kept that door open for yourself where you are turning to Allah. You are doing the tawbah, which means you are turning to Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I would like you to find a way for me, make a way for me, so inshallah I come out of this. At least that willingness has to be there. And inshallah, hoping from the rahmah of Allah, looking at the great rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if we have this much, in our mind, in our heart, that we want to give it up, inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a beautiful hadith, إِذَا هَمَّ الْعَبْدُ بِحَسَنَةٍ فَلَمْ يَعْمَلْهُ A person plans to do a good deed. فَلَمْ يَعْمَلْهُ And he did not perform that good deed. كُتِبَتْ لَهُ حَسَنَةٍ he gets reward for it. Subhanallah. He didn't do it. He planned to do it, but he never did it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Kutibat lahu hasana. He planned to do it, then he did it. Fa'idha hamma bi hasanatin fa'amilaha. When a person performs a good deed, he plans to do a good deed, then he performs it too. Now, he gets minimum 10 times the reward and it could go up to 700 times and that is not the end limit it could multiply many times more than that. Subhanallah. So a person planned to do something good and he did it. He gets at least 10 times the reward as if he had performed this good deed 10 times in his life. What a rahmah of Allah. And then he could get the reward even to the ex- as much as 700 times or even more than that. So a person did it only once and he will get the reward as if he has done it 700 times. This is how he would be treated on the day of Qiyamah. Not as if you did it once, as if you did it 700 times in your life. وَإِذَا هَمَّ الْعَبْدُ بِسَيِّئَةٍ فَلَمْ يَعْمَلْهَا A person planned to commit a sin. Now this is on the other side, the other, the other direction. A person planned to commit a sin. فَلَمْ يَعْمَلْهَا Then he did not commit that sin. Or let's take the other portion first. He planned to commit a sin and he committed that sin. كُتِبَتْ لَهُ سَيِّئَةٍ He will get one sin for it. He planned to commit a sin. Then he did it also. So he gets one sin. So in Akhirah he will be treated as if he committed the sin only once. وَإِذَا هَمَّ بِهَا فَلَمْ يَعْمَلْهَا Now he planned to commit a sin and he did not commit that sin. So try to complete the next sentence of the hadith. What should be the next sentence of hadith? A person planned to commit the sin, he did not commit it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Kutibat lahu hasana. He will get one reward for it. So a person who plans to commit a good deed, he doesn't do it, he gets reward. He planned to commit a sin and he didn't do it, still he's getting reward for it. Rahma of Allah, he just wants to give. That's all. He wants us to take. He wants to give. He wants us to be forgiven. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is really, His doors are wide open now for the maghfirah. The month of Ramadan, as I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it for maghfirah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, man lazim, man lazim al-istighfar. A person who would continuously do istighfar will be in the habit of always doing istighfar. جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ مِن كُلِّ هَمٍ مَخْرَجًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will find a way out of every difficulty for him. Allah, min kulli hammin faraja. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at every grief, at every 
hard time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make a way out of it for him. من كل هم من فرجه ومن كل ضيق مخرجا ورزقه من حيث لا يحتسب. And Allah will provide him risk from ways that he cannot even think about. In simple words, through istighfar, through turning to Allah subhanahu wa taala, through seeking Allah's forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa taala not only that He's forgiving our sins, in fact, He even gets us out of hardships and difficulties of this dunya and. He opens the doors of risk for us. Doors of risk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens it through istighfar. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was traveling with the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa jama'een, on the way, he says to Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa jama'een, Istaghfirullah. Do istighfar. So Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa jama'een said, Astaghfirullah. He said, Atimmuha sab'ina marra. Say it 70 times. So they all together said it 70 times. After they finished saying it 70 times, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever will say it 70 times every day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive 700 of his sins. And, وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ أَذْنَبَ أَكْثَرَ مِنْ ذَنْبٍ فِي يَوْمٍ وَلَيْلَةٍ And a person who commits more than 700 sins in a day and night, then of course that person is doomed. Imagine, does it sound like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is telling me and you, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Really, if you look at the hadith, it sounds like, okay, don't worry about it. But the thing is, really, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are telling us the great rahmah of Allah. That Allah's doors of maghfir are open. All we need is that we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to turn to Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Oh you have who have wronged themselves, never give your hope away in the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never despair of the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Allah forgives all sins. He forgives all sins. Now, our responsibility. My responsibility and your responsibility, especially as I said, is not optional really. Istighfar, seeking Allah's forgiveness, is not optional. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, a person who gets the month of Ramadan and does not get Allah's forgiveness during the month of Ramadan, then he has no, he, he, will, he will not be turning to Allah for the rest of the year. He will not be turning to Allah. The tawfiq of the hidayah, the tawfiq of the tawbah t- is taken away from this person. Allah takes the tawfiq away from the person. He doesn't think about turning to Allah anymore. Imagine Jibreel alayhi salam is making the dua that that person will always stay away from your rahmah, O Muhammad, who gets the month of Ramadan, is still does not get the forgiveness of Allah. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ameen. May Allah protect all of us from being of those people. And give us tawfiq to do whatever we are supposed to do to get the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not the time that we start looking at what anyone else is doing. We need to look into our own hearts. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala maghfirah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. I'll ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us, our families. And at the same time, make sure you make the dua. Allahumma ghfirli walil mu'mineena wal mu'minat. والمسلمين والمسلمات يا الله forgive me and all the believers in the world Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith a person who would seek Allah's forgiveness for all the believers a person who would seek Allah's forgiveness for all the believers he will get as many reward as the number of believers in the world imagine what's the number of people of the people of iman in the world how many millions of reward, billions of reward a person is making in seconds? This is why this is extremely important dua. Allahumma khfirli walil mu'mineena wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat. A person by making this dua gets reward equivalent to all the, num- the number of all the believers in the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our repentance and give us tawfiq to always turn to him subhanahu wa ta'ala, repent to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clean our records 
and purify our hearts. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, At-ta'ibu min al kamal la dhambala. A person who repents to Allah and asks Allah's forgiveness for sins becomes just like a person who never committed one. May Allah cleanse our heart that way and keep our heart always clean and pure to receive the nur of iman, to receive the nur of Quran, and to receive the nur of hidayah. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين.